That one working? That one working? Cool. What's up, everybody? I'm super excited. We did it. This is uh, Facebook Live, Ask Me Anything, episode number four. Technically, it's Facebook Live and Instagram Live. There's two camera lenses. This is freaking me out. Facebook, Instagram, Facebook, Instagram, Facebook, Instagram. I'm very happy about this. We made it work. I've been using this word, um, simucast, all week. I don't know if that's a real word. It might not be a real word. But uh, we're simucasting. I don't even care. If it's not a word, it's a word now. Welcome to the Facebook and Instagram Live Ask Me Anything. My name is Justin Nault. I own the Clovis Culture, and I invented the Perfect Paleo Powder, and I'm also a certified nutritional therapist and specialist in sports nutrition. The Ask Me Anything is where social followers reach out and ask me questions throughout the week and live, and I answer them. So usually we do like two or three main topics. So I'm gonna do that again. What's up, JP? How you doing, brother? Um, we're gonna do two or three main topics that I'll go through, um, sometimes quickly, sometimes not so quickly, like today, because I'm super excited about what we're gonna talk about. But before we get into that, we got some logistics to handle. Number one, click the share button on Facebook, at least. I don't know how it works for Instagram Live. I should figure that out. I don't know if you can share it, but uh, just click the heart button or the happy face button or the smiley face button or the angry button. If you're like, why is that dude wearing purple? I'll explain why I'm wearing purple. Um, but yeah, so whatever you can do, comment, likes, all that stuff, it works, it brings up engagement, puts us on more people's feeds so we can get more information out to the masses. The more good information we get out there, the better. That's the whole point of this. Um, so yeah, I got this awesome purple shirt. I'm going to explain that to you while I refresh my page and share my own Facebook Live. So if you share it on Facebook Live, it's going to share to your feed. So some of your followers will see it if you want to share this information. Or if you tag anyone in the comments, again, tag people in the comments and that's going to bring them to the feed as well. If you've seen my Facebook Lives before and you have friends or family and you're like, hey, you can learn something from this dude, then please share them and tag people. It'll, it'll be great for them. They can get some good information. I'm going to share this on my page right now. Hi, Chelsea. I love you too. <laughs> Chelsea's the best. She's my favorite. Okay. Ah, uh, share, right? Right? Let's see. Share now. Public. Okay. It's going to share to my Facebook feed. Awesome. So this shirt, uh, I want to start doing this and, and help out friends and stuff that have really cool brands. This is my new favorite shirt. This is my Optimus shirt. Um, and this comes from Mary Shinuda. Uh, Mary is known online as the Paleo Chef. She's super famous, way more famous than I am. And I met her uh, a couple years ago at Paleo FX, and she was a total sweetheart. She was awesome and sampled my product and gave me great feedback and gave it to her brother, and she was super cool. So uh, Mary Shenouda is awesome. Check out the Paleo Chef, at the Paleo Chef, I believe is her handle and everything. Um, but she owns a company called Fat Fudge, P-H-A-T, Fat Fudge. You can find Fat Fudge anywhere because it's a really unique name. It's basically almost like a drinkable packet of delicious fudge goodies that's paleo friendly, I think it's keto friendly. Um, anyway, I love my Optimus shirt. You can get it at fatfudge.com or hit up the Paleo Chef, Mary Shenouda, uh, and just say hey to her and say, Justin told me to get an awesome Optimus t-shirt. I love this thing, I'm gonna wear it all the time. It's fantastic because it sums me up. All right, let's dive into some stuff. First things first, I got a question about this and it made me super excited. Um, I got asked about sodium intake. So I bet you if I were to say, if you believe or have been told that sodium is bad for you or sodium increases risk of heart disease or sodium kills you, if you've been told any of those things, comment yes. I guarantee almost every single person in this room would comment yes on that because doctors have been saying it for 40 plus years. Um, for some reason, sodium is demonized in society when sodium is simply an electrolyte. So it drives me nuts because people will drink something like a Gatorade and say, I need to replenish my electrolytes or PediaSure. Don't ever give PediaSure to your kids. It's complete poison, right? So people, will, they'll be hungover. They're like, oh, I have a hangover. I'm gonna drink vitamin water and, and get some electrolytes. You're not getting electrolytes, you're getting sugar. It's gonna make you feel more like shit. That's why you feel like shit in the first place because you probably drank a bunch of sugary shit when you were drinking. That's how you get a hangover, right? So sodium, is an essential nutrient. It's an electrolyte, it's an essential nutrient. And to explain what an essential nutrient is, if you don't know, the word essential 
means essential for human survival, literally. So if you don't have sodium, you die. For real, if you don't have sodium, you die. It's the same as essential fatty acids or essential amino acids. These are meaning, so let's say you have an amino acid. An essential, an essential amino acid means it's an amino acid that the body requires for life and it can't make it itself. A non-essential amino acid is still an amino acid, but the body knows how to create it itself. It can grab muscle tissue or glucose, whatever, and turn it into a non-essential amino, non amino acid. So something that's non-essential can be created in the body. Something that's essential, the body can't create it itself, so you have to supplement it or die, whatever you want to do. You have multiple options there. But sodium is very, very important. How important? Well, put it this way. If you take in less than 3,000 milligrams of sodium a day, that's three grams. So if you take in less than 3,000 milligrams of sodium in a day, you are in the highest tier, highest bracket, whatever you wanna call it. You're at the highest possible risk of heart disease, of having a cardiac episode. So less than 3,000 milligrams of sodium a day puts you at the highest possible risk of heart disease, stroke, heart attack, cardiac arrest, whatever, right? the highest possible bracket. Now, let's go visit our friends, the American Heart Association. The American Heart Association tells us that we should take in less than 1,400 milligrams of sodium a day. Think about that for a second. So I'm gonna use my hands here. If you go below the threshold of 3,000 milligrams of sodium a day, you're in the highest possible bracket of heart disease risk, the highest at less than 3,000 milligrams. The American Heart Association, the top experts in the world for heart health, say that you need to take in half than that, half 3,000 milligrams. That's 1,400 milligrams. That's even less than half. Do you know what that does? Instantly doubles your risk of heart attack. What the hell? Really, let's sit here for a second and take that in. The American Heart Association is making a claim that you need to take in less than 1,400 milligrams a day of salt. Doubles your risk of heart attack. How, how do we wrap our heads around this, right? It's insanity. The only reason that anybody thinks sodium is bad for you is based on one marker and one marker alone, a biomarker called blood pressure, right? So if you're on a low sodium diet, your blood pressure can go down. So if somebody has high blood pressure, what the doctors will do is they'll come in and say, lower your fat intake, lower your sodium intake, and we'll lower your blood pr pressure. But I wanna explain something to you. When you go on a low sodium diet, it lowers your blood pressure by an average of 1%, right? 1% lower blood pressure. What it also does, paradoxically, is raises your heart rate. Now it raises your heart rate 10 to 15% on average. For some people, switching to a low sodium diet will jack their heart rate by 25%. There is clinical studies and scientific data that shows a 25% spike in your heart rate on a low sodium diet. I get crazy jacked up about this because it should be criminal to give advice to lower sodium, to lower sodium to lower your blood pressure. A 1% decrease in blood pressure leads to up to a 25% increase in heart rate. That's why your risk of heart attack doubles. It's far more stress on the organ. It's insane. Now, if you couple that with a pill to lower your, to lower your blood pressure, low blood pressure medication, this is insane. The lower you drop that blood pressure, the higher the strain on your heart. You're literally doubling your risk of heart disease. It's insane. Sodium is simply an electrolyte. It is an essential nutrient. Anybody who tells you, hey, this nutrient is essential for human survival, let's lower it as much as we can, that person's a dummy. Don't listen to them. If your doctor tells you to take in less sodium to lower your blood pressure, you need a new doctor, really. And this is where the tricky stuff with medical advice comes in because I use a functional medicine doctor. They don't accept insurance. It costs me between $250 to $400 every time I wanna to talk to this dude. It, talks to me, it takes me, costs me $250 to talk to him for 25 minutes on the phone. Legit, right? But it's the only reason, the only way these guys can make a living because insurance companies won't work with them. So I have these people who have low blood, low blood, high blood pressure. They want to lower their blood pressure, so they go to their doctor that's in their network, so their insurance will cover it, and they get advice that will kill them. This is why we need to prioritize, right? Get a cheaper cell phone and hire a functional medicine doctor. Drive a cheaper car and hire a functional medicine doctor. 
Stop eating out five times a week and hire a functional medicine doctor. Get your priorities in line, right? It's this important. I mean, the American Heart Association is giving you advice that can kill you. You know, one of my best friends in the world had a cardiac arrest and had a defibrillator installed in his heart. I know for a fact his doctor tells him to restrict his sodium to protect his heart. This is insane, you know? I mean, I'm not a doctor, I'm just Justin the musician. So <laughs> that's the thing, this is where stuff gets really crazy. So the other thing to remember in terms of dehydration, right? Um, I have this trick. So I live in Nashville, I'm a professional musician, I play downtown, I know a lot of bartenders, servers, right? And who do they text when they're hungover? Justin. Anytime they have a hangover, they text me. And they go, dude, my head is pounding me, pounding, but my head's pounding, it's killing me, I'm gonna go to a turnip truck and get some juice or whatever, they're just drinking straight fruit juice, sugar, it's gonna make them feel worse. I say, don't do that, don't go get juice. Get pink Himalayan salt or Redmond's Real Salt. Get a really high quality salt. Now, Redmond's Real Salt as well uh, has iodine in it, so this is really important and I'll get to iodine in a second. But if you have a hangover or you just have a headache and you feel a headache coming on, take a half teaspoon, don't be a baby, take a half teaspoon of sodium, of pink Himalayan salt or Redmond's Real Salt, Throw it in, a, in two ounces of water, shake it up, down it like a shot, and then drink a full glass of water. It's not gonna taste good, it just tastes like salty water, right? Get it down, I promise you, 10 to 15 minutes later, you will not have a headache. Headache cure, what does that tell you? You're just putting electrolytes in your body and you're fixing what your brain is going through. This is dehydration. People think of dehydration, I'm dehydrated, I'm hungover, I'm gonna drink water, 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 water. That makes it worse. If you run a marathon in the desert and you're completely dehydrated, and then you go to a restaurant and you drink a gallon of water, you're gonna kill yourself. You're gonna die, literally. There are actually stories of this. People after marathons in the heat, super dehydrated, drink water, and they die. It's crazy. You'd be better off taking a full teaspoon of salt, throwing it in an ounce of water, chugging it, and then drinking water. You need the sodium. You need to replenish those electrolytes. You need to hydrate yourself. Sodium is essential for that. Heat stroke and dehydration deaths are actually death by sodium deficiency. It's crazy. Sodium is so important, and that's why like, one of my favorite snacks is pickles. I get these Bubba pickles at Kroger. They're amazing, just these little pickles, and they're keto-friendly, paleo-friendly, everything, and they, they have sodium in them, and there's soap, and it's just, it's amazing. It's, a, it's like the perfect snack. When people talk to me about snacks, pickles are probably the perfect snack, right? Okay, so another thing I wanna talk about with sodium is this is even more essential. It's essential for everyone, but it's even more essential if you're on a low-carb diet. So if you're following my advice and you're eating low carb paleo, or especially if you're going strict keto, you absolutely must supplement with sodium. I mean, put it all over your food. I start every morning, I'll take a video of this. I'm gonna video my morning routine for you guys. But um, I take half a, a teaspoon of Redmond's Real Salt and throw it in, in two full cups of water, so 16 ounces of water, and I down it, right? And it's, it's fantastic. You wake up and you feel great. Sodium is absolutely essential. So when you're, when you're on a ketogenic diet or a low carb diet, what's happening is your insulin levels are chronically low. Where for most Americans who've been eating what's called the SAD diet, SAD, standard American diet, is their insulin levels are chronically spiked. Their insulin and glucose is chronically spiked. Now, both insulin and glucose play a really important role when it comes to sodium. So insulin helps your kidneys store sodium and retain salt. And glucose helps your body absorb sodium, right? So insulin helps you retain salt, glucose helps you absorb more salt, sodium. So the problem is when, when you switch to keto, your insulin levels drop, your glucose levels drop, right? So your body just has to adjust. Your body's going, oh no, we don't have these molecules that usually help us absorb and retain salt. That's part of the keto flu. So part of the keto flu that people get where they're like, oh, I went low carb and I just feel terrible, I feel crappy, I don't like this diet, blah, blah, blah. Most of the time, if you have a headache and you're feeling crappy, that half teaspoon or even a whole teaspoon, whatever you wanna do, a half teaspoon is 1200 milligrams of sodium. Throw that in a glass of water, chug it, the headache's gonna go away, it's gonna decrease the symptoms of keto flu significantly. So if you're low carb or ketogenic, I recommend you get five to seven grams of sodium a day. Like I said, the American Heart Association is gonna tell you less than 1400 milligrams. That's 1400 milligrams, that's 1 1.4 grams. I'm telling you to get almost five times that. Actually, more than five times that if you go up to seven grams. Seven grams I'd recommend if you're like a CrossFit athlete, right? If you're like a low carb CrossFit athlete, you need seven grams of salt a day. So sodium, five to seven grams, that's 5,000 milligrams, 7,000 milligrams. 
and a half teaspoon is 1200 milligrams. So just keep that in mind when you're doing the supplementation thing. Before a workout, it's about the best pre-workout you can put in your body. I mean, you'll be pumping for an hour and your workout won't feel tired. It's, sodium's fantastic. So that's the other thing is if you're an athlete, while you're working out, you lose that 1200 milligrams. That's why I use the marker of half a teaspoon because 1200 milligrams gets excreted in your body through sweat for, every, for about every hour of fitness, right? So if you have kids that are playing soccer, playing hockey, playing basketball, whatever, you should be giving your kids some too because you're sweating out 1200 milligrams an hour. If you're playing an hour long basketball game, sprinting up and down, you need sodium in your system if you wanna keep performing at that level. It's super, super important. So five to seven grams per day. I get that number from a book called The Salt Fix. The Salt Fix is a fantastic book that spells out why this myth happened. Now, by now, 2018, you guys know you've been lied to before, right? Especially if you've watched my videos where you're like, fat is important, this low fat thing is insane, it's killing people. Same thing with sodium, this low sodium thing is insane. And another thing, when people switch to paleo or keto and they start cooking and they're like, what can I use for seasonings? Load up on salt, man. You should use salt to eat real food. A lot of people switch to health foods and they're like, but I don't like greens, I don't like broccoli, I don't like asparagus, I don't like spinach. You probably do if you put a bunch of salt and pepper on it or parsley or basil or whatever. So use salt to make things more palatable. Your body has a shutoff point. It's not like sugar. If you get too much salt, your body will know. And you're just gonna be like, ugh, I can't stand the thought of another speck of salt in my mouth. Not like sugar, you can keep eating until you're diabetic, right? So your body will regulate its own salt intake. Put salt on everything. Put It's good on eggs, it's good on salmon, it's good on meat, it's good on broccoli, it's good on all veggies. Just salt your food and salt will help you eat real foods. This goes for kids too. If you're trying to get your kids to eat spinach or broccoli, things like that, little trick, just give them a coarse salt grinder, pink Himalayan sea salt, it's fun for them. Here, put as much salt in your food as you want. Do, 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 do. First time they might oversalt it, it might be gross, but they're gonna figure it out. And they say, this is what I like, I get to do this. It makes them feel cool, they get to see the big crunches of salt. It's a little trick to get your kids to eat vegetables. Salt is amazing, it's required, essential. Okay, so the other thing I wanted to say about the Redmond's Real Salt. Redmond's Real Salt, I'll put a link to it in the show notes, is a brand that I use uh, because it has iodine in it. A lot of salt doesn't have iodine, and I learned this from a graph in the Salt Fix book. Um, tons of salt, including some pink Himalayan salts, don't have a lot of iodine. Now, a lack of iodine can actually lead to hypothyroidism so, and adrenal fatigue. So you have hypothyroidism or adrenal fatigue. If you're suffering with either of those two things, you probably have a sodium deficiency or maybe an electrolyte deficiency in general. Um, you may wanna consider a trace minerals complex. There's a great one by a company called Seeking Health. Um, Seeking Health makes a trace mineral complex. I can get you a link for that. I think it's on Amazon. Let me think about that. This is fun for me because a lot of these Facebook AMAs, I have to go back and watch them and say, oh man, I, I named uh, Seeking Health, and then uh, I get a, a show notes link to it, and I put it on the Clovis blog. Let's do a time check. Okay, we went for about 18 minutes on sodium. <laughs> That's a lot of info about sodium. Um, so I think that that was, that was a good little crash course on sodium. Uh, I don't know if you guys have any questions, if you have any further questions about sodium. Uh, throw them in the comments. I can see all the comments here. So if there's any more com comments or questions that you have about sodium, just pop them in there and I can go back and answer. Um, the other thing I wanna touch on, topic number two, how often should you eat? Um, and this was actually perfect because Chelsea, who's in here right now, we had a great uh, phone call today about time-restricted eating slash intermittent fasting. When should you eat? How often should you eat? Um, if you've ever been involved in the traditional mainstream nutrition fitness world, which is also directly correlated to the bodybuilding world, there's an idea that you need to eat every two to three hours to speed up your metabolism. This is silly. It doesn't speed up your metabolism, especially if your metabolism, like almost every single American, especially if your metabolism is broken. This is only gonna cause problems for you. Chronic insulin levels high, chronic glucose levels high. It's a terrible idea to eat every two hours. That's simply insane. It goes against our biology. We are not wired that way genetically. This is me slapping the faces of people who believe that. Right? Just like if you were in the room, it'd just be back and forth, slap fest all day, turn the other cheek, we're gonna do it again, right? Okay, don't eat every two hours, dummy, dummy move, don't do that. So think about hunter-gatherers. This is where we go back to the way that we're genetically wired. Hunter-gatherers basically go through feast and famine. You kill a buffalo, right? Everyone's feasting, 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 and then they might go days without eating, literally. So in an ideal world, 
one of the healthier things you could do is eat once every 24 hours. Now, this is an, an immense, immense intermittent fast. If you're gonna eat once every 24 hours, that's really difficult. The compliance rate is super low, which is why I don't suggest it. It makes life very difficult. It's very hard to have a social life when you're doing this. So I recommend something called time-restricted eating, eating in about a nine hour window. So the sweet spot for a fast is once you hit about 13 hours of fasting, you're really in a sweet spot there. So time-restricted eating will get you there. There's an app called Zero that's free, Z-E-R-O. I'll uh, put it in the show notes. Zero is made by a, a great investor, brilliant mind named Kevin Rose. Um, Zero is awesome. You just, when you stop eating, you click start fast. And then when you start eating again, you click stop fast and it tracks your fasting over time, right? So the sweet spot is you want to hit that 13 hour fast. So if you get into deep intermittent fasting, like real intermittent fasting is usually a 16 hour fast and you're eating in an eight hour window. Um, some people actually only eat in a six hour window, right? This, again, it's very difficult, it's very difficult. And the, the biggest problem that I see with this for an average person is they don't eat enough. They get confused. They say, well, I'm doing intermittent fasting. I'm only gonna eat once per day. Let's say you eat once per day, right? You might end up in a situation where you ate once that day and you took in 700 calories. And I'm gonna give you an example of this because I have a real world example of this. Um, if you're taking in 700 calories and you're doing that day after day after day after day after day, you're malnourished. You're very malnourished. You're gonna have serious problems. Your body's not gonna work the way you want it to. It's, I mean, you're gonna run into real, real problems. You can't do that. There, there are people who fast or they'll do like the fasting mimicking diet where a couple days a week they take in 500 calories. That's, you're mimicking fasting. 500 calories is so low that you are mimicking fasting. So the idea of breaking a fast, breakfast, right? Breaking a fast is you have to eat a significant amount of food so that your body has what it needs to do what it needs to do to work efficiently. So I'll give you an example of where this can go wrong. Um, I have a really good friend, one of my best friends in the world, I love him to death. Uh, we put him on a essentially kilo, low carb paleo. I put him on my 60, 30, 10 macros. Um, the issue was he didn't know how much he should be eating, right? So busy guy, works a lot, just had a new baby, blah, 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 right? So he sends me his MyFitnessPal macros and calories, and I see that this 180-something pound man is eating 700 calories a day. And he's saying, listen, man, I've been doing um, you know, this low-carb paleo thing, and I'm not losing any weight. I'm not losing any weight at all. And so I said, okay, are you tracking? He said, yeah, I'm tracking. I said, all right, send me your stuff. 700 calories. I bumped him to 1,800 calories. I more than doubled his caloric intake and he lost nine pounds the following week. Just think about that for a second. I more than doubled this man's food intake and he lost nine pounds in one week where the previous week he lost zero pounds eating 700 calories a day. 700 calories a day yielded zero weight lost. 1,800 calories a day yielded nine pounds lost in one week. Wrap your head around that for a second because growing up all through school, food pyramid, all this, we've been taught calories in, calories out, calories in, calories out. You have to burn more calories than you eat to lose weight. This is nonsense. There's no science behind this whatsoever. Stop with the calories in, calories out, right? So again, how, many, how often should you eat? I eat two really big meals a day. So in the morning, I have Digest and Rest Paleo Powder. That's my product that I love to death. I take coffee that I make in a French press and I blend Digest and Rest with it. That's essentially my breakfast. It's 120 calories. It's 15 grams of protein. It's amazing. I love it. And I'm not hungry for hours and hours and hours. So around lunchtime, if I have that around 7 a.m., around noon, sometimes 1 p.m., I'll have four eggs, some kale, some sauerkraut, a whole avocado, and then I'll probably get a workout in somewhere after that. And then I'm gonna eat like a big steak or even half a pound of venison or half a pound of grass-fed beef and 10 ounces of broccoli and a little sweet potato or whatever, you know? I mean, it's a lot of food. I'm, I'm gonna eat probably, probably around 2,000 calories a day, something like that. But I'll do it in just two meals, you know? But these meals are spaced out in hours hours between them you know the longer you can go in between meals the better that's really what it is the longer you can go between meals the better the earlier at night you can stop eating the better because if you want to hit that 13 hour fast the idea is to be asleep for eight of it you know and make it a little easier the more time you're sleeping the easier that fast is going to be the better your compliance rate is going to be for doing this day after day after day and the zero app you will be shocked 
how much of an impact just having an app that tracks your fasting helps you, right? So when should you eat? Just put hours between your meal. Wait as long as you can in the morning or pick up digest and rest or fat loss. Um, we can hit me up in messages. I'll give you discount codes, whatever you need if you wanna check out these paleo powders. I mean, really, when I say hit me up, people don't take advantage of this. You have direct access to me. I invented these powders, they're mine, right? Write me a message and tell me what you want. I am about the best hookup you're ever gonna find on these products, right? Take advantage of this. That's what these Facebook Lives are for. I'm trying to help you guys change your lives for the better. Reach out to me, I will hook you up, I promise. So, another thing to remember about when to eat is if you're looking, there's, there's a difference in performance and longevity. So if you're an athlete, if you're a CrossFitter, and you're like, boom, I wanna put on 10 pounds of muscle, right? You need to eat until you are physically uncomfortable immediately after your workout. Immediately, you have a 90 minute window, it's called the window of gains. I wrote an article called the window of gains. Um, uh, Fitness RX for Men uh, magazine, it was one of the first published articles I ever had in a magazine. I'll link to that for you guys. This window of gains thing, people really like it. Eat whatever the hell you want after a workout, right? That's for hypertrophy, that's to get big and strong, right? To get bigger muscle mass, to get jacked, right? You have this window of gains period, and that's important. But if you're looking for health and longevity, the hormonal response is actually better if you wait a couple hours after you eat. So, I'm, after you work out, I'm sorry. Wait a couple hours to eat after you work out. Finish a workout, I know you're starving, you might be ravenous two hours later, make your biggest meal of the day two hours after you work out. Load up. That's for health and longevity in the long haul. Now, you'll get jacked faster if you want bigger muscles, you get jacked back faster eating. So this timing your food is super, super important. And if you ever wanna get deeper into it, I'm Justin at ClovisCulture.com. Justin at ClovisCulture.com, give me a shout. Tell me your exact needs, your exact goals, and I'll build a plan for you. Again, all my nutrition consulting is free. If you're interested in products, let me know. The products probably won't be free, but I will hook you up. I'll help you as much as I can because I'm really trying to help you guys get as healthy as you possibly can, right? So again, if you're gonna do intermittent fasting or you're gonna do time-restricted eating, make sure that you are taking in enough food. The only time the calories matter is when you're thinking about your food overall. How much food are you taking in a day, right? There's a, a saying that I love, which is only count calories if you're under eating. Hits the nail on the head. Only count calories if you're under eating, right? If you have the right macronutrients, overeating doesn't matter because you're not taking in enough carbohydrates to gain fat. It just, it's that simple. So only count calories if you're under eating. Put as many hours as you can between meals. Stop eating as early as you can at night and wait as long as you can to break your fast in the morning. Pretty simple, right? Okay. What else do we have here? Hold on, we got a couple comments in. See, it was only salt and pepper tonight. No butter. Oh, okay. Well, don't be afraid of butter either. As long as it's grass-fed butter, go ahead and smother your veggies in grass-fed butter. That's awesome. Don't be afraid of fat, but make sure it's grass-fed butter. Feedlot, butter, not grass-fed. Mm -mm, you don't want that. But salt, pepper, butter, especially on like sweet potatoes or broccoli or whatever, yeah. Don't be afraid of butter. Butter's awesome. Okay, the other thing that I want to talk about, I... Ooh, I thought we got disconnected for a second. I got very nervous. It's never happened before. I had a question about vegans. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> the plot thickens. All right, let's talk about vegans, okay? I wasn't gonna go here. I was just sitting here with a, a new member of my team, Josh, who is amazing. Love this dude. Um, he's the reason for all this simulcast magic. Um, Chelsea, it's it's Justin at ClovisCulture.com. No not, just J-U-S-T-I-N at ClovisCulture.com. That's my email, right? Okay, so let's talk about vegans. I was like, dude, I don't know if I'm gonna go here. This is a big topic, but we got 30 minutes left. So I can talk about vegans, all right? Let's do this thing. Um, why has the vegan thing gone crazy? It's because of What the Health on Netflix. That is why. Now, there was Forks Over Knife, there's Knives, there was Cowspiracy, all these things. The same exact filmmakers keep creating these horseshit documentaries, one after another after another, and they have people like Leonardo DiCaprio behind them, so they have millions of dollars to toss at these projects and kill people because that's basically what they're doing. I, I legitimately think that Netflix should be fine for putting these movies out. It's, it's insane. So I'll give you an, a, 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 an example. Uh, Forks Over Knives or Cowspiracy, I can't remember. They put this, this infographic out there that was like a fork with a piece of meat and a fork with a piece of broccoli, and it was like, 100 grams of broccoli has 17 grams of protein. It's complete bullshit. They made that up. 
They completely made it up and they made this infographic that went viral and for some reason in 2018 people don't fact check anything so they just start sharing stuff. I'm a vegan because I love animals and this proves that broccoli has more protein than meat. How could you possibly think that broccoli has more protein than meat? You would have to eat your entire kitchen table full of broccoli to get as much meat as in maybe four ounces, to get as much protein as maybe four ounces of red meat. This is just crazy. So there's this wonderful, delightful, amazing angel who exists on our planet today. Her name is Diana Rogers. She's incredible. Diana Rogers is making a documentary, and full disclosure, I have contributed a significant amount of money to this documentary. This is all public knowledge, right? Okay, so Diana Rogers has a project coming out called Kale vs. Cow, and I bring her up because this Forks Over Knives made this ridiculous infographic, and she corrected it and said, no, this is the amount of protein in meat, this is the amount of protein in broccoli, and just said, this is bullshit. There's, there's a bunch of garbage out there. You can't, you can't just spread lies, okay? There have to be consequences for spreading lies, right? So this woman runs her own organic, sustainable farm, and find her on Instagram. It's sustainable dish. Here, I'm gonna do a at sustainable dish. Right? Okay, cool. That's her Facebook as well. So she's on Facebook and Instagram, both as a uh, sustainable dish. It's fantastic, right? So check her out. And she will teach you things. So here's the thing. When we attack this, this vegan, vegetarian documentary thing, listen, if somebody is a vegan or a vegetarian for animal rights, I'm not knocking that. There's no way I can knock that. That's your belief system. I, I love you for having a belief system. Stay strong and do what you believe in, okay? But at the end of the day, that's why it makes sense to come at this from a different angle. Because I could sit here and talk to somebody about animal rights all day and say, you know, there are essential amino acids and that's why we need to kill animals because meat has more essential and non-essential amino acids and a full amino acid profile and plants don't. You can take the nutritional standpoint, they don't care, okay? They're talking about animal rights. They care about the animals. Why are you gonna talk to them about nutrition facts when they're talking about animal rights? They, they literally don't care. You can present them with any scientific evidence that you want to give them and it doesn't matter to them because they don't want to see animals die. So this is where Diana Rogers comes in. Also my friend CJ Hunt is making another film. Uh, I'll get to, I'll talk about CJ too in a second, but Diana Rogers turned me on to a book called The Vegetarian Myth. This might be one of the most important books I've ever read in my life. So if you have questions about vegetarian or vegan, if you are vegetarian or vegan, read The Vegetarian Myth. It's staggering. There is no way Listen to me, look me in the face. I'm gonna try to look at Facebook, Instagram, Facebook, Instagram, Facebook. There is no way that you get to survive without animals dying. There is no way unless we create scientific meat in a lab, which hasn't happened yet, they're trying, but it hasn't happened yet. You cannot survive without animals dying. Mark my words, billions of animals die every single year for monocropping which is corn, grains, soy, all these giant, a monocrop is the most unnatural thing that has ever existed in nature. Never will you find acres and acres and acres and acres of one crop big enough to have a giant machine that's a machine of death, a harvesting machine with giant blades <laughs> runs through. What do baby deer do when they get scared? Does that seem like a random question? What does a baby deer, fawn, whatever, what do they do when they get scared? Genetically, they're programmed to sit and freeze and wait for mom, right? So, big harvester machine comes, they sit, freeze, sit down. <laughs> Anytime you see harvesting happen on monocrops, on soy, grains, whatever, you see these big machines coming, vultures. You will see vultures all over in the sky. Vultures are waiting because they know these harvesting machines are gonna kill fox, they're gonna kill rabbits, they're gonna kill deer, they're gonna kill snakes, they're gonna kill everything you can think of in the millions and then the vultures get food. Harmless, right? You're not killing any animals. This, it's, it's crazy, right? So the vegetarian diet is the least sustainable for environment, period. I'll give you an example. Monocropping has destroyed 98, if not 99, uh, I can't remember, 98 or 99% of all the prairies in the United States. Prairie land, beautiful, gorgeous, sprawling prairie land, gone. Pakistan, Afghanistan, these are deserts, right? These deserts used to be lush, green rivers. That's why there are all these canals through these deserts, because there used to be rivers there. 
but it's the depletion of the soil and killing the microbiome. You're killing billions and billions and billions of bacterial cells. The, the soil in the United States prairies used to be 12 feet deep. It's now measured in inches. It's measured in inches, right? When this soil goes away, the land dies, everything dies. You create a desert. You literally create a desert. So if you're vegetarian, you're, you're vegan, and you're arguing for these animal rights, you are not guiltless. You're not, you're destroying the environment. You want another fun fact? State of the Union address last night. What did everybody freak out about? Because Donald Trump used the words clean coal, which doesn't exist, right? Clean coal, fossil fuels, they get upset about this. Where do vegetarians get their soil from? How do vegetarians feed their soil in a vegetarian garden? They need nitrogen. How do they make that nitrogen? Fossil fuels. It's one of the biggest drivers of fossil fuels, period. Manure. You need animal manure, right? If you have a garden, you need manure, you need nitrogen in the soil. And now a lot of manure you'll buy at like a Tractor Depot or Tractor Co, any of those things. It's, it's, cru it's bone, blood, flesh, it's crushed up dead animals, it's feces, all these things, right? That's what makes the soil rich and nutrient dense and gives it the nitrogen that it needs. If you don't have that, if you don't have animal products to feed the soil, you need nitrogen and you need it from fossil fuels. So you're out here, being a vegan activist and you want to save the environment and you're creating fossil fuels. So you will say Donald Trump is a monster or America's a monster for using coal or whatever and, and you're using the same fossil fuels to grow your plants when you could just use cow poop. But it's not fair to the cow gets upset when you pick up its poop or something and put it in the soil. I don't know. <laughs> it seems weird. I wouldn't mind if somebody wants my poop or soil. Have at it. You can have mine, I don't care. I'm not using it for anything. Any of you guys using it for anything? <laughs> Weirdos, right? So it's just, I, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't mean to make fun of anyone or anything like that, right? But I, I, what it is, is one of my favorite quotes, right? Never attribute to malice what can be explained through ignorance, right? So you have a lot of vegetarians, a lot of vegans who just don't know what the vegetarian vegan movement actually does to the environment. They have no idea. So. I highly suggest, I'm gonna put it in the show notes, I'm gonna give you a link to Diana Rogers' film project. It's called Kale vs. Cow. Now, myself, Clovis Culture, my company, we have contributed $50,000 to this film, right? Um, so because we've donated $50,000 to Kale vs. Cow, we're probably at some point when it comes out, which I think will be 2019, um, we'll probably do a viewing party here. I'd love to have all you there. This is gonna be a long time down the road. But uh, Kale vs. Cow, so we are involved in this process. Um, on top of that, my good friend CJ Hunt, who's responsible for the amazing documentary um, In Search of the Perfect Human Diet, he's doing a film project as well. Now, we have also donated $50,000 to that film project. That is called Dispelling the Lies. I will give you a link to Dispelling the Lies because Dispelling the Lies and Kale vs. Cow are both crowdfunding projects. So you can donate to them and you can help us make this a reality. Um, to give you an, an example, Kale vs. Cow is more storytelling. They're gonna talk to uh, uh, like there's a couple in California that ran a vegan bakery, I believe it was, and then switched over to having an organic farm and raising cattle, and now they have gotten death threats, and there are activists outside their home. It's really, really nasty stuff. Um, I mean, there's, there's a violent, violent vegan movement. Actually, the, the creators of What the Health, most of them, have been arrested for violent protests in the past. They're just complete vegan activists, which is why there's such nonsense in that movie. All they care about is pushing an agenda. So. I'm trying to raise money for kale versus cow. Long story short, I just kind of ranted on you guys for a long time. But uh, you should consider donating a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, whatever. I'll put links in the show notes, kale versus cow. Now, that'll be a storytelling documentary. Dispelling the Lies is a little different. Uh, CJ Hunt is an investigative journalist and he is badass at it. Watch his first movie, it's called The Perfect Human Diet or In Search of the Perfect Human Diet. First paleo documentary I ever saw that, that brought me over to the light. That's really what converted me, and CJ Hunt's now a close personal friend. I love CJ to death, he's an amazing man. He's trying to help you, I promise, he's one of the good ones. So uh, check out Dispelling the Lies, and we will um, do links like that in the show notes so you can help him out. Uh, Beef Made in the Lab, you're late, Casey. <laughs> we touched on that a little bit uh, uh, a few minutes ago. They are trying to do it, they have not done it yet, but eventually it, it might happen. Stuff's gonna get real weird when that starts happening. 
Um, okay, so we talked about vegans, we talked about vegetarians, we talked about the environment, and we talked about sustainability, which is all uh, pretty awesome. Um, okay, Janine, you're reading about NBA people uh, and athletic performance. No, this is going to be a real problem. Uh, this does happen a lot in, in athletes, like Nate Diaz is a really famous MMA fighter, and he's uh, vegan, I believe. Uh, no, well, I think he's vegetarian because I think he eats eggs. I'm pretty sure he eats eggs. He might even be pescatarian. I don't know. You never know what these people... Sometimes people don't even know what they are. It's like people who call themselves keto, but they're actually just low carb. It's two different things, right? Um, there's an NFL lineman who is very famous for being vegan, and he's about 400 pounds and has like C-cup boobs. So I don't know why anybody thinks that being a 400 pound offensive lineman as a vegan is healthy. Don't know who thinks that that's awesome. Uh, the other thing about NBA players is track how long they stay vegan or vegetarian for. Because a lot of times, when you switch from a standard American diet to anything that has a lot of vegetables, you're gonna do well. Like on a low carb paleo or ketogenic, you need to eat a lot of vegetables. Vegetables are super important, I love vegetables, but it shouldn't be your only source of food. It's just crazy, right? So a lot of these guys, if they're switching, if they were eating McDonald's and they switch over to being a vegetarian, yeah, they're gonna feel lighter, they're gonna feel less faster, they're gonna feel smarter, they're gonna feel fantastic. And then six months later, they're gonna be anemic. And they're gonna be like, what happened? Well, I got bumped playing basketball, and six weeks later, I still have a bruise. What the hell? Where paleo guys like me, I get cut, I heal up in a day, I'm like freaking Wolverine. It's ridiculous. Also, the perfect paleo powder makes you Wolverine. I don't know if you guys know that. It's one of the side effects, but it's, this is true stuff. No, no fake news here. So, also, uh, okay. So, it is 9-11. We got some time left on AMA number four. This is so cool. I'm so glad we're on both platforms. Um, so, I have a lot of show notes and links that I have to put together for you guys. This takes me a long time. Um, so, let's move in to Q&A. Let's do live Q&A. This is my favorite part about this stuff. Um, so start giving me questions. I have the comments here. Let me make sure I have this maximized so I can see everything. Um, Casey, what do I think? I know that you're talking about lab meat still. Um, well, what I think about lab meat is once we make lab meat, we got a real problem because we're gonna have an issue with population of animals, right? So there's already an issue with deer in the United States. I don't know if you guys know this, but there are like 1.5 million car accidents with deer uh, in the United States alone, right? So it's not natural for animals to not have predators. And I mean, humans, the only other predators we have are animals, right? I mean, are other humans, sorry, I'm trying to, God, these feeds are crazy. Um, so it's very natural for animals to have predators, they need to, right? So you'll see like in Tennessee, there, is, there are no limit on tags for does, uh, female deer. Hunters can kill as many female deer as they want every single day for the entire hunting season. You can literally be like, I killed 15 does a day. Why? Because everywhere you drive in Tennessee, you see dead does on the side of the road. You're gonna have a real population issue. What do you do with the animals? What the hell do you do with the animals? If we're eating lab meat and no one's eating animals, think about it, we've been doing feedlot cattle for 50 plus years, right? So there are millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of animals, cattle. What are you gonna do, release them into the wild? Are you kidding me? You're gonna destroy all of society. And be walking down the street, going to Whole Foods, there'd be 15 cows shitting in the street. <laughs> it's, there's no way around it. If we don't eat animals, what do we do? What do we do? Think about that, right? And now if you make lab meat that has the essential and non-essential amino acid profile, it has all the saturated fat, all the stuff that I want that I know is healthy, I'll eat it, right? That's great, but why? When we have animals there, what's the point? Okay, so let's see. Um, I'm now looking at Instagram and Facebook. So if you have any suggestions, any more questions, we talked about lab meat, what other questions we got? Send them in here. Um, we got probably 15 minutes left, so we got some time. Let's see, what's your view on drinking apple cider vinegar daily? Awesome, great. Um, it's essentially a digestive enzyme, really. So I would suggest you start the day with it, maybe before breakfast. Um, when I would do it, I'd mix it with a little bit of turmeric and just shoot it back like a shot. Um, it's great, it, especially maybe, maybe like five, 10 minutes before breakfast actually might even help you. Um, but yeah, it's basically, basically works like a digestive enzyme. Um, it's acidic, right? So stomach acid required for digestion. That's another thing when people have acid reflux, it's usually actually not enough stomach acid. So then you get a doctor that puts you on an antacid. Now you have even less stomach acid. The problem gets worse. It's insane. So, um, yeah. Um, Acid reflux is usually not enough acid. Uh, apple cider vinegar helps with that and helps with digestion. Um, what else we got? Let's see. Instagram, Facebook. 
Guys, we need more questions than this. How do you feel about fat fasting versus full fasting? Okay, um, fat fasting is fantastic, and it was really made popular by Dave Asprey and Bulletproof Coffee. Um, Bulletproof Coffee is you make whatever coffee you want, and he recommends you use Bulletproof, obviously, but Bulletproof Coffee plus a tablespoon of MCT oil. I use Brain Octane, which is C8, um, and then grass-fed butter or grass-fed ghee, right? So mix it together, and the fat fast is basically like an intermittent fast where I said, so let's say you sleep eight hours and then you wait, you wake up at seven and you wait to eat till noon. Now all of a sudden you have like a 16 hour fast on your hands, right? Um, what makes compliance a little easier is a fat fast where you'll drink, let's say bulletproof coffee first thing in the morning and that'll keep you full for hours. It's fantastic. Now you're not going to get the same exact benefits. Like even drinking black coffee activates digestive enzymes, which technically pulls you out of a fast. So you might get I don't actually know what the exact ranges are, but it's somewhere between 65 to maybe 80% of the benefits that you'll get from full fasting, you're gonna get from fat fasting, and it, the compliance rate is way better. It makes things much easier because you're not hungry. Okay, there's probiotics in the paleo powder I have each day, and I take probiotic after dinner. Is that necessary? Is it necessary? Um, probably not. Do I recommend it? Yes, because you're Nick and you're my best friend and I love you and I know what you need. So keep doing both. Absolutely. Um, and I think I have you on VSL number three or VisBiome. Um, so to give you an example, like VisBiome or VSL number three are two of my most recommended probiotics. They're made by the same doctor. VisBiome's a little cheaper. 450 billion CFU. If you're taking a probiotic right now and you look at it in your counter, I guarantee it has maybe, the most I've seen is like 50 billion CFU. Right, So when I prescribe people, pres I can't say prescribe, I'm not a doctor, I don't play one on the internet, I'm not a doctor, erase that, don't sue me, okay? Um, when I tell people, suggest lightly that they use a probiotic, um, 450 billion CFU, and if you have leaky gut or something like that, I might have you take it every single day. So I take a probiotic, I take VisBiome, that's 450 billion CFU. I take it on Sundays and Thursdays, I have a reminder set up on my phone, twice a week, it's kind of a maintenance thing. Uh, perfect Paleo Powder, Digest and Rest, Fat Loss, and Post Workout, those three formulas, pre-workout's the only one that doesn't have it, have six billion CFU of probiotics. That's a solid amount as well, and you're getting it usually first thing in the morning, replace breakfast. So um, Nick, keep doing that, take both. We have 14, 13 minutes. What should I be doing in the gym? Taking selfies or lifting weights or running six miles on the treadmill? Well, Casey, you know how I feel about cardio. I have a article that I'll link to called Simple Strength, How Cardio is Ruining Your Life, and it's true. Everybody does cardio wrong. How wrong? I wanna run a six minute mile, I wanna run a seven minute mile, I wanna run an eight minute mile, stop that shit. If you do cardio correctly, you're not even out of breath. Literally, and that's because the heart rate, the heart rate monitoring system that we know is completely made up out of the blue in the 1930s. An Olympic runner said, "I think it's 210 minus your age is maximum heart rate." Somehow that stuck. He wasn't a doctor. He wasn't anything special. He just said, "Okay, cool. Let's. Uh, this is the heart rate. Sounds good." And we've stuck with it ever since. It's insane. We don't even know where this stuff comes from. Did you know that that's where it came from? No, I, I didn't until I learned about it. It's insane. So there's a guy named uh, Dr. Phil Maffetone. The Maffetone 180 rule is you take 180 minus your age. Now this is based on solid science. 180 minus your age. So for me, I'm 31, so that's 149. I can do cardio all day, every day. I can run 50 miles a day if I want to, if I keep my heart rate under 149. And that means I am in fat burning zone, I am in aerobic zone, and not switching over into anaerobic, which is burning your muscles, burning muscle glycogen. That's why marathon runners, it's really hard to be a marathon runner and hang on to muscle mass. You're not gonna see a lot of jacked uh, runners out there. So for overall health and longevity, strength training is the way to go. Heavy resistance training. It's actually the only thing on planet Earth that can reverse osteoporosis and increase bone mass. Heavy resistance training. For living, you want to live to be 100? Resistance train and cut the cardio shit out. Or do cardio the way I just described to you. Okay, if I were to start one of your paleo powders, which one would you recommend? Okay, that depends on your goals. So again, if you want to shoot me an email, justin at cloviscultureorg let me know what your goals are. I can send you a list of approved foods to get started because remember, nutrition's number one. Supplements only exist to supplement the things you're already doing perfectly, right? No supplement is just gonna make you healthy, right? This will help, for sure, but you gotta get nutrition right first. If your goal is fat loss, fat loss formula. If we think you have leaky gut, you're dealing with an autoimmune issue, we're gonna give you digest and rest. If you wanna get jacked, I'm gonna put you on post-workout, I might get you a bundle pre-workout and post-workout. So there's a lot of different variables here, and that's why I created, I went from one product back in 2016 to launching this line of four products because people have different goals. 
right? So any goal that you have, we can hook you up with a powder. So clovisculture.com, go poke around, check out the ingredients. Um, again, fat loss is fat loss, digest and rest is for people who really need to heal. Um, and then for the athletes or people who wanna build muscle or whatever, we have pre-workout and post-workout. All right, what else we got? We talked about paleo powder, we talked about vegans, we talked about sodium, we talked about when to eat, intermittent fasting, probiotics, this is all great stuff. Oh, and I'll, I'll also give you show, links, uh, show note links to the probiotics that I recommend. Um, oh, okay, cool, let's see, Instagram, we got Instagram question. I've never answered this question. Instagram questions. First one, kombucha. Um, kombucha is a little tricky because you really have no way of knowing what you're getting. So kombucha is essentially a probiotic. Um, I've decided to not do um, kombucha. I mean, every now and then, actually, that's not true. I drank a kombucha today. <laughs> actually, I grabbed one at Kroger randomly. Um, but kombucha, I, I don't think it's going to be a problem. But you really don't know what you're getting. So you'll see on the back, it'll tell you like the type of probiotics it has in it, and it they guarantee there's a certain amount. It's usually like between one and three billion CFU, I think, in most kombuchas. But here's where you have to be really careful, and this gets into label reading. And I want to really talk about label reading as much as possible in the future because this is super important. You need to read the nutrition facts on the kombucha label because you'll see that there are some kombucha brands that have a flavor of kombucha that has 24 grams of sugar, right? And the first ingredient, like we've talked about, if you go into the other ingredients, look at all the nutrition facts and look at other ingredients, you might see the number one ingredient is cane sugar, like raw cane sugar or something like that. They try to make it sound healthy. Um, some of them use blueberry juice or like fruit juices, which are cool too. But um, you really gotta worry about kombucha because the sugar, the sugar levels can be super, super high. So the one I got today is made by uh, GT's Kombucha. Yes, let me rack my brain for a second. GT's Kombucha, and it was the cherry chia flavor, which adds chia seeds, which is pretty cool. Um, and they're soaked in the kombucha, so you don't have to worry about lectins, which makes chia seeds healthy once you get rid of the lectins. Um, and I think it has four grams of sugar in the entire bottle. So the other thing that you wanna look out for is all kombucha is gonna use some form of sugar or fruit juice or something like that because that's how it ferments, right? So with kombucha, a lot of times in the label, you'll get like this big bottle and you'll look at the serving size and they'll say, oh, okay, this one only has eight grams of sugar, but they're giving you a serving size and then it says servings per bottle too. So now you're looking at 16 grams of sugar. That's about half a can of Coca-Cola in sugar content, right? So you really, really need to think about that. It's important. So monitor the sugar intake when you're dealing with kombucha and just know that you don't really know what strain or what type of probiotics you're getting. Even if you make it at home, a lot of people make kombucha at home, you have no way of knowing really if you're getting 3 billion CFU or you're getting 50 billion CFU or whatever. It gets really, really tricky. Um, okay, so we're pretty close to wrapping up here. Um, like I said, yeah, if you can share this, share it on your feed, click the share button. Uh, push it out to as many people as you can. And I did see that some of you guys in the comments are tagging people and stuff, that's awesome. Because the more people you tag, the more people will see this, they can share it on theirs. We can get this information out to everybody. Um, I'm trying to grab all these comments, let's see. This is speedy, Sami Cast is tough. Um, you're doing awesome, Sharissa, thank you. Okay, so uh, click the share button, click the like button, click the heart button, click the happy face button. Uh, again, you can find out about the paleo powder, all of our products at clovisculture.com. Follow us on the socials at The Clovis Culture. So facebook.com slash The Clovis Culture, youtube.com slash The Clovis Culture, instagram.com slash The Clovis Culture, at Clovis Culture for, for almost everything that we have on social. Um, we're gonna be doing a lot more content. I also wanna know what kind of content you guys are looking for. So keep these questions up and ask me anything. Ask me as many questions as you can throughout the week. Um, Justin at ClovisCulture.com, all the social media channels, reach out to me. Let me know what kind of content you want more of. Let me know how this went, what I did well, what I need to work on. If you know of any cool brands that want me to wear a t-shirt, give them a shout out. Please let me know, we can talk about that. Um, also, yeah, you just just tell me if you liked them. Let's let's keep doing these. We're gonna start pushing out a lot more content, a lot more video content on all social platforms. So be prepared for that. And uh, thank you. I got some thank yous on Instagrams, all the hearts, all the likes, everything. You guys are fantastic. Um, yeah, I think we're gonna wrap this one up. So thank you. This is Facebook Live. Ask me anything. Episode number four. I will post it as a blog post. I'll give you all the show notes to everything we talked about. So uh, be patient with me. And thank you so much. I love you guys. Thank you for letting me do what I love. This is fantastic. I love you. Have a great night. Bye.